Let's talk about your book. I've got it in front of me. How are algorithms shaping our lives? Well, they're driving so many decisions that we make and that others make uh, for us as well. Uh, you mentioned, you know, product choices, media choices. You know, on Amazon, a third of the products we purchase are influenced by algorithms. On Netflix, over 80% of the media we consume and is politics, influenced by And politics, to me, which is really attention-getting, that this might actually even drive voter turnout algorithms. Absolutely. We've seen this. And there have been studies, uh, for example, Facebook did a study where they tweak the newsfeed algorithm to show more hard news, meaning more stories like the war in Iraq as opposed to funny cat videos, and it did increase uh, voter turnout. You jump right to how we can stay in control, but do we need to stay in control? Well, I think we're all becoming very passive about how we use technology, and, and algorithms are making lots of decisions for us, even some life and death decisions. In courtrooms in the U.S., algorithms are used to predict whether defendants are likely to reoffend. And that's used uh, by judges to make sentencing decisions. Ju uh, doctors are being asked to consult algorithms to diagnose diseases. And now we're seeing some of these algorithms, which we think of as rational, infallible machines, are capable of bias. We've seen examples of race bias, gender bias, gender bias in uh, recruiting algorithms, race bias in the algorithms used in courtrooms. Is it courtrooms. really the algorithm, or is it the coders who were designing the algorithm? Yeah, so people tend to misunderstand this, because you think it's the coder who's feeding in the bias. It's not. The coder is not. Modern algorithms learn how to make decisions from data. And so it's the training data that's given to them. And the data usually is decisions made in the past. So if judges were biased in the past, the algorithm picks it up. If uh, re recruiters were biased in the past, the algorithm picks it up. You call for transparency in data, because a lot of times we don't know that an algorithm is making a decision, not a person. And even if we do know, we don't know what data set it's using. But how much good will transparency give us if we don't understand how to correct algorithms? Do we, do we need a new study or school of thought around that? Yeah, so I think we need a certain set of consumer protections. Consumers need transparency, and in the book I've proposed a bill of rights, an, in, an algorithmic bill of rights, which includes transparency for consumers uh, regarding the data and the decision making. Uh, it also includes control for consumers, but also I argue for some legislation, such as a requirement that companies should audit their algorithms. The audit should be done by a team independent of the team that developed the algorithm. And that's how I think we can take back some control. Would that, would that audit team be employed by the company, or would that audit team live outside the company and, in other words, be a government agency? Oh, no, I think the audit team could be either within the company, but independent of the team that developed the model, or it could be a third party company that audits and certifies it. And then there might be a government body that's actually looking through uh, some of these reports and ensuring that at least in socially important settings, the algorithms go through some testing b uh, before they're deployed. And testing beyond just the simple technical measures that engineers look at, but socially important tests like fairness and so on.